morning. So, in the previous class we discussed about the liquidity management of the commercial bank and there we have seen that the commercial banks can manage both assets and liabilities to manage the liquidity and the first step is they have to estimate that how much liquidity requirement is there. Then after that they can use either the asset side or liability side to maintain that particular liquidity or to achieve that particular liquidity level which can maximize the uh, objectives in terms of the uh, required fulfilling the demand for the stakeholders and as well as the profitability. In today's session we can start the discussion on the, the other liability management of the commercial banks and the most important liability of the commercial bank is the deposits. And uh, <coughs> here we will talk about that what are the different types of deposits the commercial banks always provide and how effectively the interest rates of the different deposit rates are calculated. So, whenever we talk about the interest rates for the deposits, mostly we are dealing with the two types of interest rate, one is nominal interest rate, other one is the effective interest rate. So, whenever we look at the deposit rates, mostly we always look at the nominal rates only, but uh, in the real terms if you want to calculate the value of that particular asset, instead of using the nominal rate we should use the effective rate. So, we should discuss also that what this effective interest rate is all about and how that particular effective interest rate is calculated. So, before that we can first start the discussion on the types of deposit accounts what the commercial banks provide, then after that we can try to estimate or try to calculate the effective interest rate and as well as the, uh, the pricing of those particular uh, securities or particular deposits what the commercial banks provide. You see that uh, why the deposits are very important uh, because the deposits the only source uh, or the we can say that the critical source which commercial banks can use for the lending activities and as well as uh, we can say that uh, this is the base of the or the base capital of the commercial banks always have which can be utilized for the various reasons or various purposes. Moreover, the deposit basically provide the uh, raw material for making the loans. So, that is why it is represent the ultimate source of the profit for the depository institutions like commercial banks. But whenever the deposits are basically uh, managed by the commercial banks, there are two things basically they should keep in the mind that uh, where the funds can be raised at a lowest possible cost because although there are various types of deposits are issued, but the effectively we have to find out that which is the best possible way the commercial bank raise the deposits by that the cost can be minimized that is number one. Number two, how the management can ensure that the particular bank always has enough deposit to support the lending activities and the other services the public demands. So, uh, whenever the already we said that deposit is the core alternative or source of uh, providing the loans and as well as other banking activ activities of the commercial bank, then we should ensure that this particular deposit should be managed in such a way by that that will be enough to fulfill the requirements of all type of banking activities what the commercial banks are basically doing. So, these are the two major issues in terms of uh, the deposit management. One is the cost and another one is the management of deposit that means maintaining the sufficient amount of deposit to fulfill the requirements. So, these are the two things what basically we should keep in the mind or we should always consider whenever we are basically managing the uh, deposits, uh, deposits of the commercial bank. You see that whenever you talk about the types of deposits in the commercial banks, commercial banks provide different type of deposits, but the major type of deposits broadly if you categorize them, we have the demand deposits and the time deposits. So, these are already whenever we are discussing about the balance sheets of the commercial bank, we have also discussed uh, this particular topic, uh, this particular issue that how the commercial banks uh, assets are classified. 
or the liabilities are classified. So, in that liability part we have discussed that there are two major types of deposits what the commercial banks provide. So, now we talk about the demand deposits, how the demand deposits are defined. The demand deposits basically what uh, here the funds deposited can be withdrawn by the depositor at any point of time without any advance notice to the banks. When I am going to withdraw my money from my account that basically information is not required uh, or information should be uh, given to the bank in advance that is basically not required in that particular context. And the ownership of demand deposits can be transferred from one person to another person via checks or any kind of electronic transfers. Whenever you can uh, pay the money to somebody from your account or money will be given to somebody else from your account, then you can always uh, use the check facility what the commercial banks are provided or you can also transfer the money through the electronic transfer or the online banking. So, that, that way the ownership of that particular deposits can be transferred. And in the demand deposit case, there is no fixed term to maturity. The maturity period is not fixed whenever we discuss about the demand deposits. So, these are the different characteristics, broad characteristics of the demand deposits whenever generally we discuss. And whenever we talk about the demand deposits, there are two types of demand deposits in general. One is your savings account, another one is the current account. So, these are the mostly used accounts which comes under the demand deposits of the commercial bank. So, let us see that what basically the savings account and what the current accounts basically are all about. So, whenever we talk about the savings account, this interest rate of the savings account is fixed by the commercial bank and that interest rate can change from period to period but that is solely depend upon uh, depends upon the commercial banks itself. The commercial bank only can decide that how much interest rate should be paid against this savings account. This is number one. Number two, there are certain restrictions on the number of withdrawals that how many times you can withdraw the money in a particular period, there are restrictions for that and also there are restrictions in the amount of withdrawals during that particular period. How much maximum money can be withdrawn? that particular within that period that also can be specified by the commercial bank and as well as the restrictions on the number of transactions or number of withdrawals also that also will be given whenever we are discussing about the savings account. And in some cases the minimum balances may be also prescribed by the commercial banks to offset the cost of the maintaining and servicing of the such deposits account. In a particular period basis, either quarterly basis or monthly basis, a minimum balance should be maintained with respect to that savings account. That also can be considered whenever we talk about or we define this savings account of the commercial bank, which comes under the broad category of the demand deposits. So, these are three major characteristics what we can say. One is the interest rate is fixed by the bank itself, number one. Number two, the number of withdrawals are restricted. And sometimes also the there is some kind of amounts will be uh, fixed or amount can be limit amount can be given that how much money this particular customer can withdraw in that particular period. Then as well as the, in this account a minimum balance is concept is involved where a minimum amount of money should be kept in that particular account in a periodical basis by that the cost of that particular deposit account can be managed. Then we have another is the current account. So, here the bank is basically obliged to pay the money on demand. Whenever the customer needs the money, the bank is bound to pay that particular money and it does not bear any interest, it does not carry any interest. That means, the bank does not have to pay any interest against the current account deposits. And uh, uh, there also the commercial banks can have some kind of restrictions on the or can a subscribe or can be pres can prescribe to maintain a minimum balance to avert or to uh, overcome the cost associated with this particular account. So, these are the major differences is it does not carry any interest and as well as there is no such restrictions in terms of withdrawals or the number of withdrawals from that particular account. So, this is the typical characteristics of the current account. 
So, these are the basic difference between this savings account and current account so the commercial banks basically try to uh, use. Then we have the time deposits. So, in the time deposits or the term deposits, uh, the characteristics of a term deposit is uh, they have a fixed tenure. The maturity period is fixed from the beginning that whenever the account is open. Then uh, the interest rate which is uh, basically involved with respect to the term deposits, they depends uh, they basically depend upon the tenure or the maturity period of that particular deposit and the amount of deposit. And this particular rate varies from bank to bank. It is not that the particular rate is fixed across the banks, the banks to banks the fixed deposit rates may vary. And generally the interest rate is higher for the term deposits or time deposits because they are generally long term in nature, because the long term returns uh, always higher than the short term returns in general, because the long term is more riskier than the short term. So, in this context also the same risk return principle applies that uh, generally the interest rate is higher for the time deposits of the longer tenure than the short tenure deposits. So, there are three types of term deposits which prevails in, in the commercial banks. One is your fixed deposit, then you have the reinvestment deposits and the recurring deposits. So, these are the three major types of uh, deposits what always we observe or always we find whenever we talk about the time deposits or the term deposits of the commercial bank. So, what basically the fixed deposit means that is a fixed rate of interest uh, and it is fixed from the beginning and it can be renewed from period to period and on that particular point of time whatever interest rate is prevailed against that particular deposit that can be revised accordingly. But whenever we talk about the reinvestment deposit, here the interest is compounded quarterly or monthly whatever time period will be fixed and that will be paid on maturity along with the principal. So, in the flexible deposits amount in savings deposit account beyond a fixed limit is automatically converted into the term deposits. You can have the idea about this that if you have a savings account then you have given option that that can be considered as a flex, uh, flex scheme or flexi deposit scheme then after a minimum amount can be kept in that particular savings account and the rest of the money can be converted into the term deposits, but there is uh, uh, that money can be withdrawn at any point of time, but that will be converted into the term deposits after the minimum amount of balance will be maintained in that particular account. But if anybody wants to withdraw money from that particular account that can be withdrawn, but the interest rate on those kind of deposits are higher than the normal saving deposit rates what basically is prevailed in the market in that particular point of time. So, another one is the recurring deposits. The recurring deposit means that a fixed amount is deposited at regular intervals for a fixed term and the repayment of the principal and the accumulated interest is made at the end of the term. That means, periodically a particular amount of money will be deposited. Then once uh, uh, that particular uh, that period of that particular deposit is fixed, generally it can go up to 5 years. So, once uh, let the frequency of uh, the payment is uh, monthly. So, per month basis you can pay certain amount of money let 1000, 5000 whatever it may be. Then after you, know, you cannot withdraw the money within that particular 5 years and once that 5 years will be completed whatever deposit money has you have deposited uh, and you can get back that money with uh, your accumulated interest. So, that is basically called the recurring deposits. So, that also comes under the uh, time deposits or the term deposits of the commercial bank. Then uh, we have another type of typical deposits which works in the Indian context that is called the NRI deposits or NRI accounts. The non-resident there are three types of NRI accounts which prevail in the Indian context. One is your non-resident ordinary accounts. So, in case of uh, non-resident ordinary accounts what happens any any person or the resident outside of India can open this account in India. When a resident becomes a non-resident, his uh, domestic rupee account gets converted into the NRO account or the non-resident ordinary account and this helps the NRI to get his credit which accrued in India in terms of investments or in terms of rent and all these things what he was supposed to get 
in the Indian market that can be received through that account. Previously, that person was a resident of India. Now, he is not the resident of India, but now even if he is not the resident of India, that account will be converted into the NRO account and the interest and all kinds of uh, rent or any kind of investments what they ha he has made in the Indian market that will be deposited into that particular account that is called the NRO account. Then you have the non-resident external rupee account. So, here uh, basically it is a rupee account and the NRI can remit the money to India from funds abroad. So, whatever money if somebody is uh, some NRI is working in abroad. So, whatever money they will remit to India. So, that for that they can have this would have a non-resident rupee account where the money will be transferred from the other countries to India through that particular account. Then we have foreign currency non-resident account. So, here this account is opened by NRIs can in 6 designated currencies. This particular money can be converted into the different currencies and that can be deposited into that account and this 6 designated currencies are US dollar, uh, Great Britain pound, Euro, Japanese yen, Canadian dollar and Australian dollar. Either of these 6 currencies can be used to transform that particular particular money into that particular account or money can be transferred to that account in this particular currency. So, these are the 3 types of uh, NRI deposits or NRI accounts which prevails in the uh, Indian market or for the Indian commercial banks. Then let us see that uh, how this uh, the concept of nominal and effective rate of interest basically works uh, in the deposit case or any other interested case which prevails in the commercial banks. So, generally all the cases if, if you observe that uh, the every time this particular interest and all these things are not annually compounded. So, that may be compounded quarterly, may be monthly. So, depending upon the nature of the deposits, the compounding frequency is different. So, if the interest is compounded monthly, quarterly or half yearly, then the concept of effective rate will be different from the nominal rate. If this particular money is compounded yearly, then there is no difference between the effective rate and nominal rate, but if the compounding frequency is uh, more than annual, that means it will be uh, uh, more than annual in the sense the frequencies are more uh, in a particular period. That means it can be in a particular year 4 times it is compounded or maybe 12 times it is compounded, then there is a difference between the nominal rate and the effective rate. So, if you want to calculate the uh, effective rate from the nominal rate, then we have to find out that how many times it is compounded in that particular year. So, here if you see if your uh, r is equal to uh, your uh, nominal rate uh, sorry effective rate and your k is your nominal rate m, m is equal to frequency of the compounding per year, then your effective rate will be 1 plus k by m to the power m minus 1 that will give you the uh, effective rate of that particular account or for that particular calculations. So, if you if you see one uh, example, then it will be more clear. For example, there is a 2 year term deposit which gives you the interest of 10 percent which is fixed from the beginning, but if the interest amount is compounded on a quarterly basis that means 4 times in a year then the effective rate can be calculated in this way. That means, already we know that this is uh, your 10 percent is your nominal rate and quarterly means it is 4 times is compounded in a year, then 1 plus 0 0.1 divided by 4 to the power 4 which is nothing but the number of times the particular money is compounded in a year minus 1, then that will give you the 10.38 percent. In, in a general context, if you see that the actual interest rate which is fixed it is 10 percent, but actual effective rate is more than that. The reason is it is this money is compounded uh, more than once in a particular year. So, that is what basically the concept of effective rate which considers the frequency of the compounding in that particular year. So, then uh, we have uh, So, there are different kind of uh, schemes what we, where we have discussed, if you, if you see that then how this uh, particular money or interest rate can be calculated with respect to this uh, uh, different type of deposits that uh, we can 
explain through the examples. Let there is a two year fixed deposit of uh, 1 lakh rupees with bank ABC and the interest rate is let 11 percent. So, what basically you can do maybe whatever money you can you can can get instead of spending that put or waiting that particular period up to the maturity somebody can withdraw the money and reinvest it in the market as a savings account. But generally what happens that that particular thing does not prevail, but the return what you get it from that particular investment with respect to the fixed deposit that will be either equal or more than the return what you are getting or you are expected to get if you can reinvest that money in the savings account. So, here our uh, issue is ascertain the interest amount if the payment is made quarterly, half yearly or annual basis and what should be the interest rate if the interest is withdrawn every month and transferred to the savings bank account. You assume that the interest will be withdrawn every month and that will be transferred to the savings bank, bank account. Then what is the basically interest rate what we can get whenever this kind of uh, situation arises with respect to that particular kind of deposit. So, here if you see that uh, the interest amount is 11 percent. So, quarterly if you, whatever interest you are going to get your principal amount is 1 lakh rupees 1 lakh into 0 0.11 divided by 4 which is the quarterly interest rate. If your month annual interest rate is 11 percent your quarterly interest rate will be 0 0.11 divided by 4 then you are basically quarterly interest amount is 2750. If uh, your half yearly interest amount is that 1 lakh into 0 0.11 divided by 2 that is 5500 uh, uh, 5, rupees. Then we have for if you go for the annual interest amount then this will be 11000 rupees. So, these are the interest uh, what you can get in the different frequency. So, here the saving rate we are assuming 4 percent the interest rate in the savings rate normal saving rate uh, saving deposits is 4 percent. So, if you want to discount it with respect to that monthly interest then how basically how much we are getting that is your 1 lakh into 0 0.11 divided by 12, 12 means this uh, uh, number of times this is uh, particular money is paid plus 0 0.04 which is 4 percent uh, of the saving rate that is 913.62. So, if you verify this uh, in the monthly interest rate basis then how much we are getting basically 913.62 into 3 plus 913.62 into 0 0.4 into 3 by 12 because this uh, particular uh, interest rate will be 0 0.04 divided by 12 uh, multiplied by 3 because it is we are calculating quarterly then it will give you 2750. So, here also the quarterly interest rate what we are getting that is 2750. So, if the interest rate on ABC can uh, for that particular bank is rupees 1 lakh rupees FD. So, if the interest amount are withdrawn every month then that will they will be getting the interest rate will be 10.96 percent that is 913.62 multiplied by 12 by 1000. So, the effective rate basically we are getting 10.96 percent. So, the fixed deposit rate was something different that is 11 percent which is more than the 10.96 percent. So, instead of depositing that particular money in that savings account in the periodical basis we can go ahead with this particular fixed deposit scheme which can give you the better return than the reinvestment of that particular money by withdrawing the periodical basis and again reinvesting in the savings rate in the savings account. Then another one is the reinvestment scheme here that uh, your reinvestment scheme means that whatever money you have uh, deposited in that particular account that is the initial deposit that is your RI your RI is the initial deposit then R is equal to basically already I said the calculations will be always based upon the effective rate. The calculations should be always based on the effective rate not on the nominal rate. So, first of all we have to calculate that what is the effective rate for that particular deposit and that effective rate can be utilized or can be used to calculate the total money what we are going to receive from that particular investment uh, in that particular deposit scheme. So, let uh, your amount deposit amount at the end of the reinvestment period it is RIM 
and r i is equal to your initial deposit amount, your effective rate already you know that 1 plus k by m to the power m minus 1 and k is equal to the nominal rate of interest and m is equal to the number of uh, times the particular money is compounded in a particular year. Then uh, here if you see that uh, and n is equal to the number of years you are holding that particular deposit or particular kind of scheme with you. So, in this context if you want to calculate the total value against that particular deposit, then how much value we can effectively get from this. So, here uh, if you take this example, let uh, the depositor opens a reinvestment account of this particular bank ABC bank and the interest rate offered will be 10 percent for one year scheme and 11 percent for a two year scheme and 12 percent for, for three year scheme then find the maturity amount for a quarterly reinvestment of rupees 20,000 for a period of 2 years. Here the initial deposit amount is 20,000 which will be uh, reinvested uh, in the periodical basis. So, here what basically we are, we, are, we are observing that already you know that your R i m is equal to R i into 1 plus r to the power n and here your 20,000 is the initial deposit and r is the effective rate that we have to find out and period is the 2 years that is to the power 2. Since it is a quarterly reinvestment that already we are assuming then your effective rate will be 1 plus 0 0.11 that is 11 percent for 2 years that is why we have to consider this one. For 1 year it is 10 percent, for 3 years it is 12 percent. So, that is why we have to consider this rate because this particular deposit reinvestment scheme is for 2 years only. So, that 0 0.11 which is the interest rate for the 2 year scheme 0 0.11 divided by 4 to the power 4 minus 1 that will give you 11.46 percent. So, your effective rate has become the effective rate has become 10.46 percent. So, now you can find out the ending value what we are going to receive from this particular deposit scheme that is your R i m into 20,000 is equal to 20,000 into 1 plus r to the power 2. 1 plus r to the power 2 in the sense r is equal to in this case is 11.46 percent, then your period is 2, then effectively we are getting 24,846. So, if you are going for the nominal rate, then this will be 0 0.1 divided by 4. Uh, so, uh, so, in this case what basically we are trying to say that instead of using that uh, uh, 11 percent in this case, we are using 11.46 to find out this particular value. So, your nominal rate was 11 percent, but your effective rate has become 11.46 percent because it is compounded quarterly. So, that is what basically the reinvestment scheme is all about. Then we can uh, we can see about the another kind of scheme also in commercial banking sector people can go for that is called the cash certificate. So, the cash certificate means you have to find out the issue price because that is basically issued at a particular discount and redeemed at par. So, here your issue price is equal to your present value which is nothing but the face value of the present value factor at a period n and with a frequency of the k then uh, your sorry your interest rate of the k. So, here n is equal to your tenure and k is equal to your interest rate then if you want to get this particular example then it will be more clear. So, let there is a interest rate of the 14 percent per annum on a cash certificate having a value of uh, 100 after 1 year. The particular value maturity value what you are going to get the face value is 100 rupees after 1 year. Then find out the issue price of this then uh, uh, and you assume that it is reinvested quarterly. Then first of all we have to find out the effective rate then again we have to discount with respect to that effective rate only. So, your effective rate has become uh, 1 plus your 1 4 0 0.1 plus uh, 1 4 divided by 4 to the power 4 minus 1 that is 14.75 percent. So, now your effective rate has become 14.75 percent and your issue price if you want to calculate from this, this is nothing but your uh, your actual uh, face value of that particular scheme is uh, or particular deposit is 100. Then 100 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1475 and this is for 1 year then uh, the 1 plus 7 5 to the power 1 and that will give you 87.14. Then if you invest 87.14 which is compounded quarterly then we can 
get if your 14 percent per annum is the nominal interest rate on this particular cash certificate, then effectively you can get 100 rupees after one year. So, this is what basically the price what we can get for the cash certificates. Then we have the recurring deposit scheme. So, recurring deposit scheme concept also uh, if you want to find out the amount on the maturity value of the deposit of the recurring deposit scheme, your future value of annuity can be calculated in this case that is your uh, RDM is equal to RD into FBIFA the future value annuity factor that is uh, represented as a BIFA. Then your RDM is equal to the maturity value of the deposits and RD is equal to the installment amount what you are paying in the uh, different uh, uh, frequency or in the regular intervals what you are depositing in that particular account. So, in, in this case if you take this example, so if you want to find out the maturity value of a monthly installment of 1000 for 12 months and the interest rate for this is to assume that 8 percent per annum then it is compounded uh, it is also compounded quarterly. So, in this case what basically we find that the effective rate has become 8.24 percent and uh, uh, rate of interest if you want to calculate that is 8.24 percent divided by 12 that is 0.69 percent. So, then if you want to find out the maturity value of this because it is month basis. So, then it is uh, your uh, 1000 into 1 plus 0.0069 to the power 12 minus 1 divided by 0.0069 this concept already we have studied then uh, it will give you 12463.77 that means effectively you are paying 1000 rupees per month that is 12 months that means effectively you are paying 12000 rupees and if it is compounded the effective rate is calculated on the basis of the quarterly payment then the amount of money what you are going to receive that is 12,463.77. So, 12,000 rupees you are invested and you got this much money which is relatively higher than the uh, interest amount what you get from the savings account and the other accounts. So, this is what the uh, maturity value of the recurring deposits can be calculated. So, what basically we have discussed in this case that the commercial banks provide various type of deposits to cater the demand for the depositors which includes the savings account, current account, then we have the different type of term deposits like you have the fixed deposits, you have the recurring deposits, you have the cash certificates, you have the reinvestment scheme deposits and all kinds of things. And the interest rates uh, generally vary across the time of deposits and the interest rate depends upon the term to maturity and as well as the amount of money which is invested in that particular fund. And the always uh, remember the calculation should be uh, made on the basis of the effective rate instead of the nominal interest rate. So, whenever we are trying to find out the maturity value do not consider the nominal rates what basically is we are receiving we basically consider the effective rate and the effective rate basically captures the impact of the compounding frequency of the payments or the compounding of the interest rate for that particular deposits. So, this is about the types of deposits and the interest rates of uh, involved in that particular case. So, these are the references you can go through uh, about the uh, different type of deposits which is available in this case. Thank you.